Hi, this is Jeff Palmer um, once again here uh, with Clean Machine doing the live broadcast. Let me just turn off my phone real quick. Make sure we don't get any interruptions. So obviously there's a lot going on right now. Uh, if you're listening to this live, uh, you definitely are concerned about what's going on with the virus pandemic right now, and, and as we all are. And before I get into some of the research and the science and stuff, I want to you know, uh, say that my heart goes out to any of those who've been directly or indirectly affected by the virus, um, either directly by getting it themselves um, or indirectly uh, by losing jobs or having the industries they um, uh, work in shut down. Uh, I know it's affecting a lot of people out there. Um, so, you know, my heart's going out to you. And, um, and, and in that, uh, I think, obviously, if we lose jobs, we can regain jobs. If we get in financial trouble, usually we can get ourselves out of it. And I'm hoping that for everybody that does, I hope there's relief for all of you that uh, um, are in financial um, trouble with the, the changes right now. Um, but what I, I can offer is um, maybe some information that could be helpful to you in um, our first line of defense. Um, and obviously with any immune or bacterial uh, attack on our human body, uh, our first line of defense is our immune system. Um, when we look at COVID-19, um, COVID-19, the vast majority of the deaths have been uh, with people with already compromised immune systems, uh, like advanced disease states or compromised lungs where the uh, virus seems to attack. Um, but also uh, the elderly. Now, a lot of the elderly, because of poor diet or poor health, already have compromised immune systems. So this seems to be uh, the lion's share of the people who are getting most uh, negatively affected, including dying from it, are those with compromised immune systems, either an elderly or those with already um, disease states or advanced ill health. So what is our immune system and what does it do? Well, I'm not a scientist and I'm not going to talk about that. Nothing I say should be intended to heal, cure, treat, or any disease state. So please understand that. Um, I just am sharing um, nutritional information uh, that hopefully can be helpful to you in a practical way. And um, so, Okay, so we know that the immune system is the key number one factor. And if we have a strong immune system, we have a much better fighting chance uh, to defend against uh, this and any virus or bacterial infection. Um, so that being said, what makes up our immune system? Where is that generated from? Well, about 70 to 80% of our immune system uh, it comes from, springs from our gut, our intestinal tract. That's where the vast majority of antibodies and immunoglobulins, these are the key fighting frontline factors that our body uses um, for that. And they're created right in our intestinal tract by our microbiome. So then if the immune system is probably the most important thing we could focus on and 70 to 80% of our immune system is in our gut, is generated from our gut, and that's our microbiome, what should we be doing to address a healthy microbiome? Well, let's just start with what do they eat? What does probiotics feed on? And that is uh, mostly fiber. Uh, there are other things that they can feed on. Um, like uh, 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 inulin or different other um, oligosaccharides and things like this. But the vast majority feed on fiber or variants of fiber. So we have a real clear three-step understanding. One, viruses are, are, are showing to be uh, the worst effect on people with poor immune health. Two, where does our immune health come from? Our gut and our microbiome. Three, 
what do we need to feed our microbiome in order to produce healthy amounts of these immune boosting ingredients? And that is fiber. So as simple as one, two, three. One, what, what is our first line of defense? And that's immune. And two, how do we boost our immune is, is feed our gut and what do we feed it with? And that is our probiotics feed on fiber. Now, interestingly enough, um, Animal products, as I've said in, uh, in other videos, uh, tend to create a bile environment in our gut. And our body secretes bile because it's a little more difficult to break down those proteins, those dense proteins in animals, uh, milk, eggs, dairy, chicken, fish, meat, poultry, all of it. Uh, so meat tends to generate a bile environment. Now in a bile environment, bad bacteria can thrive. Good bacteria are probiotics, are healthy bacteria that are there to produce these immunoglobulins and antibodies, these actually can get killed off by that environment. Plus they have to compete with the, uh, with the sources of energy and stuff um, with the uh, bad bacteria. So clearly if the meat and animal products uh, create a bile environment, which reduces your friendly probacteria, you're gonna um, also, um, reduce your immune response. So um, quite literally, the probably one of the best ways you can focus on very inexpensively, and you do it every day, multiple times a day for most people, which is eat. And in your food choices, eat less of the animal products that create a bioenvironment and disrupt our microbiome or actually kill it off and eat more of the products out there that are plants, especially plants high in fiber, uh, fruit, uh, greens, and your dark greens, and especially beans. Beans are one of the highest in fiber sources. Um, so those foods are great for consuming high amounts of fiber, feed those probiotics. So some people say, well, why not just take a probiotic supplement? I personally don't, and here's the reason why. Um, we have over 40 trillion, by some estimates, there are estimates around the board, but I'll just say for approximate value, about 40 trillion, um, slightly more than the human cells in our, that make up our human body. Um, so 40 trillion cells of microbiome in our microbiome. Now, if you're taking a, a supplement that has 8 billion in it, do the math, 40 trillion, 8 billion. That's a huge difference. Basically, 1% or less than 1% uh, you'd be affecting. We also have over 400 different strains of probiotics in our gut. So if you're taking a supplement that has 8 to 12 different strains in it, 8 to 12 compared to over 400 that our body may need to actually produce the right uh, uh, what's called postbiotics. These are the um, chemicals, nutrients, um, that our microbiome produce to help our body generate uh, a, a strong, healthy immune defense response. Um, so I, I, in this case, I think there is a place for probiotics. If you have a specific thing that can be um, improved by a very specific probiotic, and that's borne out in the research, then I think that has a place. But when you're talking overall health, look, you know, 8 billion, 12 strains compared to 40 trillion and 400 strains, that just doesn't make any sense. But there's a different way of approaching that. You could actually just feed all 40 trillion, all 400 strains, what they eat, fiber. <laughs> so instead of trying to take just a probiotic supplement, why not take food and feed them all? That makes a better environment where they can grow, they can multiply, they can feed so much that they multiply very rapidly. Um, so many of these strains can reproduce in, in hours and, 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 and really uh, uh, multiply in a, in a huge quantity very quickly. Um, so the next question would be, okay, well, wait a minute, COVID is uh, attacking the lungs. Coronavirus, more properly known as COVID-19, um, uh, specifically COVID-19, is attacking the lungs. So how does our microbiome affect our lungs? Well, I want to share with you this um, amazing research um, that was done by Catherine Winley. Uh, she is the co-director of John Hopkins Center for Tuberculosis. So she's studying uh, tuberculosis, which obviously affects the lungs. 
And she uh, came across some interesting research. Now, uh, I'm sad to share this in one way because unfortunately it was animal research and I do not condone animal research at all. But the information is there, I think, you know, uh, in, in support of the animals' lives that lost their lives for this, we should at least value their lives by sharing the information that this can actually do good for somebody. If I died for a cause, I'd want it to be to help people. And I'm, I'm hoping that they, they also do that too, even though they didn't have the choice. Um, so this research was done and she found that as soon as um, the uh, mice were actually infected with TB, um, their whole microbiome changed significantly. And, and I'll just read it to you verbatim from the research article. She found that tuberculosis changed the bacterial communities significantly. After infection, the diversity of the gut microbiota actually dropped off significantly. As time went on, the samples of, of their feces, which we she could measure the microbiome, um, had totally different bacteria in it than before they were to. Now, this is interesting because uh, what it's saying is that our microbiome can actually shift depending on what's happening to our bodies, like nearly instantly. And if we are feeding it good sources of fiber, our microbiome can make those changes, which means kill down some of the bacteria that it doesn't need specifically for this injury, and then increase rapidly the amount of bacteria that produce good metabolites that could help us fight off a certain infection, in this case, tuberculosis. So she saw just within that short period of time, a radical change in our microbiome, and our microbiome then producing appropriate chemicals that actually help us boost our immune system, boost our defense against that specific injury in this case, tuberculosis. So she wrote, uh, the TB infections were in the lungs, but these differences showed up in the gut. Wingley and her colleagues think that the immune system is sending a signal about the infection to the gut, which appears to respond by killing off bacteria that it's not necessary and promoting the growth of bacteria that could be even more helpful for this specific injury. So this is how important our immune system is and how important it is for you to make sure you are feeding your gut mi microbacteria. Now, it was interesting too that those, the levels of our microbiome can shift with every single meal. So every time you choose more plants and ideally no animal products, you are giving your microbiome and your immune system the best fighting chance uh, to, to address this situation. Um, now that's pretty exciting because it's really down to our own personal choices. Um, you know, boosting our own microbiome naturally. Our body is going to do this for us. All we have to do is provide it with the food it needs, the resources it needs. Now, inflammation also comes into this equation. So um, uh, when you eat animal products, when you eat processed foods too as well, like especially white sugar, white flour, but also mostly animal products, they can be pro-inflammatory. They increase inflammatory cytokines and, and lots of inflammation factors in our body. This inflammation then lowers our immune system because our immune system is engaged producing all this inflammation to try to counter this inflammation. Now, normally inflammation is a good thing. A little bit of inflammation is a good thing because it's, it's when you're injured, you have an inflammatory response, sending white blood cells there to heal, to repair, to signal, to trigger the body into a healing process. What you don't want is to be consuming foods that trigger that response for really not a good reason. You're not injured. You're not sick with a bacteria or a virus. This is when your body needs to be at a low um, uh, immune um, uh, response situation. And, and what we are dealing with with standard American diet is people are living in chronic inflammatory states. That's where disease states like heart attacks is a disease of inflammation. Diabetes, this is an inflammatory disease. Arthritis and stroke, these are all based on inflammatory or chronic inflammatory situations where we're pounding the body's inflammatory response with poor diet, with eating animal products. Now, what reduces that inflammation? Plants. 
I mean, if you look at the things that are anti-inflammatory, they're antioxidants, they are uh, micronutrients like vitamin C and, and CoQ10 and alpha-lipoic acid, all from plants. Um, fiber is anti-inflammatory. Go to Dr. Greger's uh, page, uh, nutritionfacts.org. He's got some great new information and studies on how fiber is anti-inflammatory. And that's a beautiful thing. And then you've got other anti-inflammatory things like omega-3s that are in plants, uh, really high in uh, plants and seeds and nuts and things like this. And, and omega-3s, plant-based omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. Now, when you're getting them from animal products, you're getting a little anti-inflammation and you're getting pro-inflammation. So that's not the best equation. When you're getting it in plants, you're getting the antioxidants, the polyphenols, you're getting the chlorophyll, you're getting uh, the omega-3s, you're getting uh, potentially this amazing amount of fiber. All of those things are anti-inflammatory. So which are you gonna choose from? Uh, a group of foods that are pro-inflammatory or ones that have lots of different ways of addressing inflammation. You wanna get that healthy immune response so that when your body is really attacked by a virus or bacteria or cold or flu, whatever, your body can respond as healthy as possible. Healthy gut, healthy response. That's what you want. So reduce the inflammation with plants, uh, with fiber, antioxidants, and, and omega-3s. And then that fiber being a key uh, factor to feeding your gut microbiome so that you can have the healthiest immune response. When you have a healthy immune response, that is your best response. That is what this body is born with. It's what we come into the world with. Without our microbiome, we die, period. <laughs> There's no two ways around it. It's a symbiotic relationship. We feed them good stuff, they protect our body. It's really simple. It's a beautiful relationship. We just need to respect that. We need to understand that there are more microbiome probiotic cells in our body trying to help us, trying to protect us against inflammation and, and against different disease states, parasites, uh, bacteria, and viruses. They attack them, they get, they get them killed, but we've got to help our, you know, our, our probiotics. And we just, it's real simple. Just feed them what they eat, fiber. Now, how much fiber is found in animal products? I'll make this very simple for you. Zero, there is no fiber in any animal product. Meat, dairy, eggs, fish, chicken, nothing. No animal product has fiber in it. Now, what does have fiber? Every plant source in its whole food state. And that's why I produced a whole food based plant protein. Now, most of the plant proteins out there strip out all the fiber. Yes, yeah, some of them sprinkle a little bit of fiber back in there, but it's not in its whole food state. And, and that's why I created Clean Green Protein to try to give you the best health, not just protein for physical fitness. If that's all you want, well, that's what you're gonna get. But I really believe in whole food nutrition. Now, when you look at Clean Green Protein, not only is it higher in fiber than any of the other uh, plant-based proteins out on the market, any of the top five plant-based proteins out on the market, higher in fiber than all of them. It's also in its whole food natural state. Remember, clean green protein is, um, is 60% whole food. Not only that, super high in antioxidants, really high in chlorophyll, and 50% of your omega-3s in a single scoop. So you've got the fiber, you've got the antioxidants, and you've got the omega-3s all in a single scoop. Now, that can really be helpful to your immune system, reducing that inflammation so you have a healthy uh, inflammatory response when your body needs it, not a taxed in, uh, inflammatory response because your body is constantly dealing with inflammation from the food, your bad foods you're eating. You know, you want a, a, a back up healthy immune system and healthy inflammatory response. So reduce that inflammation with plants, especially plants that are high in fiber and high in omega-3s. That's why I was so excited about bringing uh, lentine to market in clean green protein. So um, just a single scoop of clean green protein has eight grams of fiber. That is 32% of your total daily needs of fiber basically one third. So that's saying in one meal, you can get all the fiber that you need for that meal in a single scoop of serving. Now, what's cool is I put together a smoothie, a real high fiber smoothie, and I'll share that with you in the, um, in the bottom there, um, is take one scoop of clean green protein, one frozen banana, a 
couple of dates and some oats, almonds, cacao, cinnamon, and of course some water. Now cinnamon is uh, like a lot of the um, other um, uh, spices are very good at boosting the immune system. They are very good at uh, a very high in antioxidants. Cinnamon's higher in antioxidants than most of the things that you consider like blueberries or or uh, even acai berries. This is a cinnamon by multiples higher uh, in, in antioxidant capacity. They're super antioxidants, the spices are. So adding a little cinnamon, adding some cacao, again, high in polyphenols, high in fiber, um, high in uh, micronutrients too as well. The oats, really high in fiber, good source of protein as well. Use organic whole oats. So the way you do this is you take the oats, the almonds, and the dates, put them in a glass of water, and put it in the fridge. Next day when you get up or if you're working out, post-workout, take those and put it in uh, the blender and blend it down, make a nice smooth milk base out of it. So you basically got a real almond milk and real oat milk uh, all combined in there and slightly sweetened with whole uh, plant dates. Good source of sugar, good source of energy, but also also containing some of the fiber too as well. Now, with all that, with that recipe, you are going to get over 100% of your daily value of fiber. That's 27 grams of fiber and a single shake. You're also going to get your 97% of your iron to help build your blood, make sure that's strong so it's carrying these nutrients around to the proper places that your body needs it. You're going to get 64%, over a gram of omega-3s in that, just in that alone. I mean, these are great for reducing inflammation, nourishing the body, building the body, obviously with the protein as well, but those powerful antioxidants, polyphenols, and anti-inflammatory effects of the fiber and the omega-3s great shake doing that on a daily basis and your body can have the defense it needs to ward off some of these um, uh, challenging issues that we're facing in these days now obviously i just read another article today about uh, h5n8 i believe it's a new form of the avian flu um, and it just came out of uh, germany out of poultry manufacturing so again, every time you choose plants over animals, you are saying that I am not going to support an animal industry, whether it's pigs and swine flu, sheep and hoof and mouth disease, um, uh, chickens and, and avian flu. All of these flus are being created by the animal industry. And the less we can eat animals and the more we can choose plants, we will have a healthy body, a better defense to handle these uh, possible pandemics. And we're going to be supporting the reduction of the production of these things. Remember, these animal farms where animals are packed together, there are feces is all over each other. They're just contamination factories. And then we feed them with antibiotics, which breeds these super strains of, of, of antibiotic resistant bacteria and viruses. And, and, and we just keep multiplying this by multiplying these massive groups of animals being bred together for production of animal foods. We are incubating these diseases that could wipe out humanity. We need to change. And I'm hoping you will make that change healthier for you, healthier for the planet, and God, healthier for the over a trillion animals that are killed each year just for our food supply. It is totally unnecessary. I know you've seen it before, but there is no reason to be eating these animals nutritionally or otherwise. Um, and, and by choosing a plant-based diet, you could radically shift our food production away from animal products and into that. So I, I hope this works, you know, this information is good for you. I hope it empowers you. Keep doing the right thing. Keep making good choices for your body, for the environment, for the animals, for your health, and show what strong, healthy people can do when they make the right choices. It's a win for everybody when we do it. And it's the only way in when we make the shift away from an animal-based diet to, to, to possibly put an end to these viral contaminations that we're going through. Nobody wants to suffer what we're going through now. And if we continue on, it is probably only going to get worse. You can be part of the positive change. And for those of you who have already made the change, thank you. I love you. I respect you. And I applaud you. 
and I'll applaud you any way along the change. Remember, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. The more you choose plants over animals, the healthier you're going to be, the more you're contributing to the health of the environment, to the animals, and to the ending of the possible more outbreaks that could be horrific for this planet. I hope you've enjoyed this information. If you like it, please send me a like, send me some messages down below. And um, please also uh, uh, share this video so that this information can get out. The more we can get people with a healthy immune system based on a plant-based diet, I think we'll have a much better fighting chance for those who do encounter um, these types of situations. Blessings to all of you. Hope you're well. Thank you.